curled post-it note. So I'm going to create a new layer, label it my post-it note, and post-it notes are square. So I'm going to use my rectangular marquee tool on my post-it note layer. I'm going to hold down my shift key to constrain. And in my color picker, I am going to pick a post-it note layer. And a post-it is definitely orange. Okay, there it is. There is my orange post-it note layer. I can grab my paint bucket tool. I'm on my post-it note layer. I have my selection active, which means I can fill right in there, and then I turn off my selection, Command or Control D. Fantastic. Post-it note. Done. Well, yeah. Now we need to do a drop shadow on this. So we're going to do a drop shadow on this, and there's a couple different ways we can do a drop shadow. Kind of fun. Easy. We're going to show you three, maybe four different ways. We'll say three. Okay? Here's what we do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this post-it note layer. And I can do that using Command or Control J. There it is. I just copied this. I'm going to go and I'm going to take my color that I chose for my post-it note, darken it up in my color picker, use my paint bucket tool, and I'm going to fill this post-it note copy, which I'm going to call my shadow. And I'm going to place it behind my post-it note. Now I can't see it because it's directly behind there. The command J is what's called new layer via copy, and it's a great way to duplicate something directly on there. Okay, That's one way to create a shadow. It's exactly the same size, and now I can blur the whole thing. So that's one way of doing it. Okay, Here's another way. Let's try this. I'm going to go to my post-it note layer. And here I'm going to command or control click on my thumbnail to get that selection right there. I can turn that layer off. You don't have to. I'm just doing it to show you I've got my selection. I'm going to create a new layer here. But you know, here's a trick. I want to create a new layer, and every time I create a new layer, it always creates it on top here. Well, shadows go behind. So instead of clicking on the plus here and putting the new layer on top, I'm going to hold Command key down. I'm going to click, and it's going to put it behind. Now I can use my paint bucket tool and I could fill it with the same shadow color there. So different way of doing a drop shadow like that. Kind of cool. Now the third way is kind of interesting. This can be kind of tricky. But you know, it's actually kind of cool. I'm going to go to my post-it note layer and I'm going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to click on my effects panel. And I know that the drop shadow is one of the things that people learn very early on in Photoshop. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply a drop shadow here. And with my layer style coming up, I can go and I can choose the opacity of my drop shadow, the color of my drop shadow, and interestingly enough, while I'm in the middle of creating a drop shadow, if I need to pull up the color of my post-it note, all I have to do is just click on this when I'm in my layer style and picking a color. I can then go and choose what color I'd like my shadow to be. And that was all brought up right here by clicking on that little rectangle, choosing a color, and then adjusting my brightness. I can control the distance and the spread and the size. And it's set to multiply. Hmm. And the opacity. Well, I'm going to set the opacity way up to 100%. You'll see why. I'm going to click OK. The problem with this drop shadow effect is that I don't really want it sitting here. I would like it off to the left, okay? And I also would like to break this apart. But when I do an effect here, the effect is always going to be based on the pixels on that layer. Case in point, if I have my eraser tool and I try to erase my drop shadow here, it doesn't work. But if I erase my post-it note here with 100% opacity, you'll see that the drop shadow erases with it because the drop shadow is an effect. How would you like to turn that into an actual layer? Well, here's what you do. Because this is a drop shadow effect, right now I don't have the ability to break it apart as an object. Go to your layer, right-click on the effect, and from that drop-down menu, choose Create Layer. It's going to say, oh, you know, there are certain effects that can't be broken into layers. I know. Drop Shadows is definitely one that can. There's my Drop Shadow layer, already blurry. Hmm, 
That's cool. And now that it's its own layer, I can move this all around. Now going back to our original shadow here, I didn't blur this one. And you know what? If I do go in and I blur this, I could select that shadow and I can go under Filter. I can go under Blur. I'm going to choose Gaussian Blur because Gaussian Blur allows me to see a little window here and I can set my blur so I get my shadow behind there. Great. Okay. So different ways of doing this. Now on my post-it note, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make it look like these two edges are curling up towards you and it's all going to be an illusion of highlights and shadows. I'm going to create a new layer up above the post-it note and this is going to be my shadow on top of my post-it note. With my brush tool active I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a very large brush but I'm going to create a very soft brush as well. And the way this works is anything that's coming closer to you, so if these wings were coming closer to you, they would have more of a highlight. Because those wings would be coming up, they would be creating a slight cavity in the middle of this paper, and I would have a shadow right about there. Okay? Big soft brush, absolutely. Now I'm going to create a new layer, and this is going to be my highlights on top of the post-it note. I'm going to go back to the post-it note layer, option click to sample that color, color picker, saturation slider to lighten my color of the post-it note for my highlights right there. Wonderful. Go back to my highlight layer with my big soft brush and I'm going to hit the corners right there because again corners are coming up towards you so this is going to make it look like the highlighted corners are curling up towards you. Now let's go over to our layers panel and I'm going to open this up and I would like to clip the shadow to my post-it note. Option or alt click. I'm going to do the same thing with the highlights. On my shadow layer, you want to set the blending mode to multiply. And you can really see the difference here. That's normal mode and it just kind of looks dirty. You do multiply and you can tell some of the orange comes through. The intensity of that's a bit much, so I'm going to cut that back. Highlights, again, I'm going to set those to screen. And those are a bit intense and I'm going to screen that back. Okay. Now we still aren't at the point where it looks really realistic and the reason why is because our shadow that's behind here is the culprit. So with this shadow I'm going to position it here so I get a little bit of shadow but not going off the top. I'm going to use my command T for transform in the shadow. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose warp. I'm going to right click again and then I can go ahead and I can split this horizontally and vertically in order to be able to break this up and warp this in a finer area. Now if you, I would like several grids in here so I'm not going to go in and I'm not going to do it here with a right click. I'm going to come up here to my options bar and I'm going to set this as a custom, actually as a custom grid here that's a three by three and it's going to divide it up into sections of three. Now each and every one of these points becomes an editing point. With this drop shadow, and I'm still in distort mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these corners out. And I'm going to pull this out a little bit more. And I want to get my pull handles here kind of in line so that I get a better looking warp. Now, you would think that more points on the grid are going to do better for you. And actually, in this case, it isn't. It's going to make it harder. I'm going to hit escape and get out of my transform. I'm going to go back to my command T, right click, and I'm going to just choose the standard warp. And here's why. The standard warp, I can just pull the edges. And you notice when I pull the edges, I get nice flowing curves because of my handles. If I break it into small sections, then I keep tripping over those sections and I have to move each section and I get this really weird convoluted bumpy kind of warp. Now because the paper looks like it's coming up from the edges, the more the paper comes off the page, the more of a shadow is going to be cast. The less the paper comes off the page, the less shadow is going to be cast right there. So I'm going in and I'm trying to give it the effect that this thing is curved. All right, there we go. Now this shadow is a little bit severe, so I'm going to set the opacity back here so it doesn't look too crazy. You can always go back in, do your Command T for transform, right click and choose warp, and pull those out however you'd like to pull those out. In, out, more extreme, one more than the other, who knows. But it's kind of amazing to see this 
I'm going to set the opacity back down even further. And it really does look like this is coming off the paper. Now, what doesn't make it look totally believable is that we do see some shadow up here at the top. And a sh you wouldn't see that shadow unless, of course, this was coming off the page. So if I do my Command T for Transform and I choose my Warp, and I kind of tuck these in and maybe pull this out, you can see that if I tuck this right in, it will anchor that right here to make it look like it's sticking. Because no shadow would mean it's right up against the object. Here, if I'd like the corners to kind of make it look like they're curling ever so slightly, I could. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to adjust the shadow on the post-it ever so slightly, and the highlights down even more, to give us that cool look of that post-it note being curved. Crazy thing is, is if I turn off all the shadows and highlights there, that post-it note is a perfect square. But boy, it sure looks like that thing is warped, and it's coming at you, and it's curving. Now I just want to show you here, if you do want to curve this post-it note, I'm going to click on the post-it note, do my Command T for Transform, and I'm going to take my perfectly rectangular post-it note, and I'm going to adjust it literally that much, okay? Barely even noticeable, okay? And if I do that, this is going to really amplify that effect. But what's crazy is that it's barely off square. But those highlights and the shadows there really make it look totally awesome and believable. That's what I love about this kind of stuff. Now, I'm going to undo that warp that I just did. So I'm going to go back to my post-it note here and get a perfect square like this. Why? Because I'm going to do a different technique. I'm going to do a cast shadow coming off the back of it, as if this post-it note were like a block standing straight up. So I'm going to do my Command J, and I'm going to duplicate my post-it note. And with a post-it note in the background, I'm going to grab my color from my post-it note, create a shadow color going off like this, and grab my paint bucket tool with that, and I'm going to fill the entire thing. Why didn't we see it fill? Because it was behind. Okay. So now with my shadow, I'm going to use my Command T for Transform, right-click, choose Distort. I'm going to grab the top handle. I'm going to lay it down, kind of like a slip shadow going off to the back. Okay, Pretty awesome. Now I could go into my filter menu and I could choose my blur and my Gaussian blur and I could blur this to make it look very believable. But one of the issues is, is that when you do a shadow like this, it always looks like your image is floating. And the reason why is because you don't have an anchor shadow. Well, what's an anchor shadow? Well, an anchor shadow is a shadow that actually anchors the object to make it look like it isn't floating. And an anchor shadow is very, very, very subtle. And you can see that if you put something on a surface, like a can, and you light it really well, there's going to be a kind of a very tiny, tiny dark line right at the base of your can where it touches the surface. So I'm going to grab my brush here and I'm going to create a very, very, very small brush, okay? Super small, like one or two pixels. And my anchor shadow, I'm going to come in here, and I know my spacing was set way off here because we were using that for our lasagna noodle. I'm going to set that spacing down or else you're just going to get dot, dot, dot. Now on my um, anchor shadow layer, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to shift click over here. And I'm going to create an anchor shadow. And all you need is like one pixel, okay, for a shadow. And when you do this, what it does is it will now anchor that object in there. And you don't need much. In fact, that line isn't completely, totally straight. I didn't paint it straight. So now let me just take that out there, okay. I'll do my brush. In this case, I'm not going to click here and then shift click. I'm actually going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to click and paint a straight line so that I know it is a totally straight line right there, okay? That's my anchor shadow. And all I need, seriously, is one pixel, okay? And that's going to anchor that in there. And it's not much. I'm going to set the opacity up a little bit more, okay? Or down, I should say. And that anchor shadow is actually going to anchor it right there. It needs to be a fairly hard edge, too, okay? 
And here, unfortunately, I can't move it more than one pixel at a time, and I've got it about one pixel out there. My other shadow is still poking out from the front, so I would need to get rid of that shadow there and have my anchor shadow right there. And then when you do that, it doesn't make it look like your object is floating. It's just a really cool trick. And that's called an anchor shadow. And there you've got your cast shadow coming off the back right there. And you can move that all around, but just don't make sure make sure you don't get that shadow poking on the front. Because then if it is, then clearly that's going to be floating. But keeping that softness of the drop shadow behind there so that we don't see it poking out the front. Okay? I selected everything there. There we go. Okay? And then that pose that shadow there, I don't want to have that poking out the front there. So, really cool thing. That's a slip shadow with an anchored shadow in front.